walk through of the Boeing product portfolio. Going into the future, efficiency and fleet structure is key for airline success, and airlines must pick the most efficient possible. Here is what Boeing offers. Starting small and we start with the failed Embraer partnership. Initially, Boeing was supposed to have a regional jet to slot below the 150-seater MAX 7 and compete with the A220 in the 100 to 150-seater market. However, due to the failed partnership, they are left with the 737-7 as their smallest jet. Let's look at the Dash 7. Flying 153 passengers to class to 3850 nautical miles is the smallest aircraft Boeing has on offer. Its capacity is on point to serve the 100 to 150 seater market, but it does suffer from excessive range for most routes. Also, as it's a shrink of the larger Max 8 with the same wings and engines, it has higher seat mile costs and is less optimized. The newest 737 series has new CFM Leap 1B engines, new split winglets, and all this reduces fuel burn around 14 to 16 percent depending on the variant. Let's look at the larger Max 8, seating 178, two class to 3550 nautical miles. And dare I say it, it fills the sweet spot of the single out market. Enough seats and enough range, with the same trip cost but lower seat cost by 5 to 6 percent than the competitor. The larger Max 9 has upgraded wings, higher takeoff weight, reinforced fuselage, but is not in any sweet spot, being short in capacity at 193 seats to class to 3550 nautical miles with an auxiliary tank. To compete at the highest end of the single out market, the 200 seaters, Boeing launched the Ultimate Max 10 featuring a 66 inch fuselage stretch, a modified landing gear design, but with the same wings and engines still slightly uprated to produce up to 29,317 pounds of thrust, the most powerful CFM Leap on B yet. It carries 204 2 class. Enough seats, but its range takes a hit at 3,300 nautical miles, still longer range than the initial 737s, making it perfect for short haul domestic routes, and in fact, it has the lowest seat cost of any aircraft. And there is a gaping hole between the largest single out to smallest white body, which happens to be the 787-8. 787-8 is the first and smallest Dreamliner variant, with the lowest takeoff weight without the active boundary layer control aerodynamic improvements of Dash 9. It carries 242 passengers to class but flies 7,355 nautical miles. However, its capacity is on point to fill the middle of the market, but its range is too excessive. Also, it suffers from relatively high seat mile cost as the larger Dash 9 with better aerodynamics, a more optimized design, has only 4% more trip cost but 16% lower seat cost.
Now let's move on to what I think is the most relevant Boeing product today, the 787-9. Why? Well, it offers the same 11 pallets of cargo as the 850-900, an aircraft from the class above, the same range capability at 7,635 nautical miles, which is enough for most airlines, but is a smaller aircraft carrying 292 class. low trip costs, sufficient size and impressive cargo plus reliability, the 787-9 is the money-making white body that can be deployed on any major long-haul route profitably. The 787 family ends with the perfect 10. Well perfect for medium haul high capacity routes, 787-10 is a simple stretch of the Dash 9 with a modified gear, a 5.47 meter stretch and 5,000 pounds more thrust per engine. It has almost similar trip costs to 787-9 but with 40 more seats, its seat cost is reduced again by at least 10%, giving it the lowest seat cost of any white body. Not only that, but it takes 13 pallets of cargo to more than its direct competitor size-wise. So what's the catch? Range. The aircraft can only fly at maximum of 6,345 nautical miles, enough for most regional routes but on longer ones it lacks the outright range. Also, it's really only most efficient operating routes around 3 to 5,000 nautical miles. That said though, 77-10 is the perfect platform in my opinion for Boeing to upgrade with the next generation ultrafan engines giving 25% to 30% low fuel burn, Boeing could install ultrafan on an upgraded 787-10X. Weird name, but with 25 to 30% less fuel means it's 25 to 30% less range, meaning an aircraft with well over 7,000 nautical miles, a perfect size and cargo, with sufficient range on longer routes, and a perfect 777-300ER replacement. or at least a better 777-300ER replacement than what Boeing currently proposes. Going into the future, the large long-range white body of Boeing is presented by the 777-9. So in my view, it might be too large. Carrying 426 2 class to 7,285 nautical miles, it could be considered a VLA. The market for such large aircraft above 400 seats has remained stagnant, with little new orders. Boeing added seats to the 777-300ER in making the Dash 9, as they needed to lower the seat mile cost to make their 777-9 competitive against the all-new A350-1000. And so, they created the largest twin in the world, though might be too large for the bulk of long-range aircraft now, which stands at 250 seats to 300 seats flying 7,000 to 8,000 nautical miles. There is another 777X, which development has been delayed two years at least. The 777-8, it is intended to seat 384 2 class and fly 8,730 nautical miles, replacing the smaller 777-200LR. But again, 
It's a simple shrink of the larger Dash 9 with the same wings and engines, meaning only slightly less trip cost but with much higher seat cost than the larger Dash 9 and less cargo all for the range. Few routes in the world require up to 8,730 nautical miles or that high a range payload capability, making the Dash 8 a niche aircraft. So there we are, the entire Boeing product portfolio that they are going to offer going into the future. In my view, the 737-8 and 787-9 are the most competitive. The 737-8 being in the sweet spots of the 150-200 seater single house and the 787-9 being the sweet spot of all long range white bodies. Is there room for something in the middle between the 737-10 and 787-8? Well in my opinion, yes. And with huge efficiency gains, a new middle of the market aircraft with around 250 seats to 5,000 6,000 nautical miles of range could open up an entirely new market. It will be interesting to see what Boeing does in that segment. Thanks for tuning in and to meet next time. One team, one aviation, one sky ahead.